In this video, we will collect data from a form and convert it to JSON format and then send it to a server with JavaScript and the Fetch API. Okay, so here I have a simple HTML file with a form. The form has a username, a password, terms and conditions uh, checkbox, and a submit button, right? So very uh, typical. You can imagine this is some kind of uh, sign up or register form. It looks like this in the browser, right? So these inputs, they have a placeholder. So if the user fills out this form and clicks submit, Submit, we want to send that to the server in JSON format, right? But first we have to collect the data from the form. So I have script tags here. So in here I can write JavaScript. We want to collect the form data when the user clicks on the submit button, right? So then the form gets submitted. So we're going to listen for the submit event on the form element. So I can select the form first. I like to append L to the variable name if I select an HTML element. So then here we're going to attach an event listener so that we can do something when the submit event occurs, right? So we're listening for the submit event. And then this is the function that we want to run when that event occurs, right? So using the modern arrow function syntax. Okay. So let's, I, I'm going to save here and I'm going to check what actually happens right now if we try to submit, right? So just filling this out. Okay, so that was a weird refresh. So right now in the default situation, when you have a form and the form gets submitted, there's actually sort of a refresh. And that's because uh, maybe you, you've seen this before. There's also an action attribute on a form, right? So the default situation is actually that the browser tries to submit the form data to an address that you specify here. This used to be how you would submit a form to your server. You would specify the, the server address here. And then the browser would try to go to that page, right? So that's why you see sort of a refresh. So that is still some default behavior and we don't want that default behavior. So what we can do is we actually get an event object here. And the browser always gives us, gives us an event object when an event has occurred. And one of the things we can do with that is we can say event.preventDefault, right? So we don't want that default behavior. We don't want that weird refresh, right? So now when I go here and I try to submit, nothing happens, which is actually what we want right now. Okay, so when the user clicks submit, we want to get the data from the form, right? So we want to see the, the username, the password, whether the user has checked the checkbox. So we could select all of these elements individually and get their value. But there's an easier way with uh, form data. So it looks a little bit strange, but we can say new form data. And then we just pass a reference to the form. We very easily get all the data from the form, right? So now we have an object here, form data which makes it very easy to work with the data from the form. For example, maybe I want to see the value for username, right? And I'm going to lock that. Right, so if I save here, right, so now my username, let's say it's blah, blah. If I submit now, I see the username, right? So I can also, for example, uh, set a value to username. So I can overwrite what the user wrote. I can also uh, delete this particular value. I can also append something to the form data, right? So with form data, it's, it just makes it easier for us to work with the form data, but it does not give us the format yet in which we want to send it to the server. We want to get all the form data and we want to create a JSON object out of that, right? And that's what we will send to the server. So let's try doing that. How can we, how can we get the right format here? Well, let's actually create a normal JavaScript object out of all the form data. And then when we use fetch, right, we're going to use the fetch API. We will stringify it to JSON, right? So we just want a normal JavaScript object. So how can we get that from here? Well, it's a little bit strange, but we have to use uh, object.fromEntries. And then we pass the form data, right? So if we lock this, console.log data, right? Blah, blah, secret is my password. So now what we get is a, an object, as you can see. So we have username, blah, blah, terms, conditions is on, right? So a checkbox, when you check it, it's actually on. If you don't check it, it's off. Password is indeed secret, right? So now we have this normal JavaScript object, right? And we're going to convert it to JSON in a second. We want to send this to a server, right? We're going to use the fetch API for that. So we can write fetch. So I'm going to use a service called uh, recres.in. We can also get data from them, but we can also submit something to see if it works. So the URL is API users. Okay, now we're submitting data. So we need a second argument here because it's going to be a post request. 
right? The default here is get. So if you're just getting data, you don't have to specify this, but here we want post. Now, when you submit data to a server, you also need to let the server know what the format will be. We do that with headers. Well, it's only going to be one header, which is content type. Now we cannot write object keys with a hyphen like this. So people typically wrap this in quotation marks and then that will work. Okay, so the content type is going to be JSON, which is in the application category. And then here in body, the actual data that we want to send, right? So that's the data here that we, from the form. But basically we're going to stringify it. That's why this method is called stringify. Right, so now we're taking our normal JavaScript object and it will be converted to JSON format, right? And that will be the body that we send to the server. Okay, so I'm going to save here and then uh, we're going to check it out. I can uh, check this by looking in the network tab. Okay, so I'm going to fill out the form, blah, blah, secret. I will check the checkbox and I'm going to submit here. When I scroll down here, we do see a network request for users. So here we can see there has been a post request and the status code is 201, which means a resource successfully created, which is indeed what we want to do when we have a post request. We want to add something to the user's resource. We can see payload, right? This is the data that we sent with the request, right? Which is correct here, right? And in view source, we can see that uh, the format is indeed JSON, right? You can tell by these quotation marks for the object keys. Okay, now one uh, other thing with fetch here is you may also want to get a response, right? Or you want to do something with the response. So a very basic way of dealing with a response. We're going to get a response object here, and that's going to be in JSON format. And we want normal JavaScript. So we're going to convert the JSON that we get in the response to a normal, to normal JavaScript um, syntax. And then here we get the actual data that the server sends back to us. So for now, we're just going to lock that. It really depends on your on your setup. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what you expect that the server is going to send back? Maybe just a success message or, a, or an error message. I have a whole video on the Fetch API. I highly recommend you check it out because it goes a little bit deeper into the mechanics of it. For example, one of the things that could happen with Fetch is actually promise-based. And this promise will reject, as it's called, if the request response cycle cannot be completed. For example, your internet falls out. In that case, we will go in .catch here. And we will get an error object, which we can log for now. But uh, this could be, you know, an easy way of dealing with the response. Go to the console here and I quickly fill this out again. Right, so we actually do get a response from the server. It's actually sending back the object that we sent it, but it's actually, but now it also added an ID and a created add field. But now it also added ID and uh, created add properties. So this is a confirmation that, that the submission went successfully. Now there is one problem that can happen, by the way, if some of your inputs here have the same name, right? So I have name, username here, name, password, name, terms and conditions. Now, sometimes you're going to have multiple checkboxes or select inputs or select fields, and they may have the same name. In that case, when you do this, when we create a normal JavaScript object, it's not going to take all of them. It's only going to take one of them. A quick and easy way of solving that is to simply make these different names, right? So you could you can just tack on a number like this. All right, so this was an example of how to take form data, turn it into JSON, and send it to a server with the Fetch API in JavaScript. All right, that was it for this video. Hope that you learned a lot. Now, if you like the video and you want to become a professional modern JavaScript developer, then definitely check out the full course. It has two beautiful real-world projects that we built from scratch, and you will learn much more like Fetch and Promises and Async Await, Destructuring, the spread operator, advanced JavaScript, how to structure or architect your projects, modern front-end concepts like components, state, and rendering, and much more. It's all in there. Check it out. The link is in the description. In any case, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.